All right, folks, in this video, we're going to show you how to remove your CPU out of your Del Vostro 3670. Uh, part two, we will put a different CPU in it. So you could figure either you're upgrading or downgrading. Um, in my case, I'm going to downgrade it because uh, I want to put the CPU in a different computer. One that uh, sitting right there that has a little more... Uh, opportunity to be upgraded we'll say um, so let's go ahead and get started so we got these uh, screws in the back um, you may have screws and have to get a screwdriver I have the uh, hip switch those out at least from the ones I had to the ones you can use your uh, use with your fingers and as soon as we get this thing off here all right there we go So our uh, CPU is over here, and hopefully I can work on this without uh, everything being in the way. We are going to have to uh, obviously get this housing off here, so let me show you how to do that. Alright, so we are uh, going to be able to get in here with our screwdriver. The uh, 3470, in that model, this thing pops off. And uh, in this case, looks like we have enough access to uh, remove the four bolts that are securing your whole enclosure. And that pops up probably is loose enough. At least I hope I can get to all of them. This is a uh, rather large um, setup here. I must say, Let me take this around. At some point, I'm probably not going to be able to do one of these. I have a feeling. I need a better screwdriver. I think. All right, so we uh, we went and got a different screwdriver. Uh, just so you know, this is a Phillips number two. You could probably get a Phillips number one to work as well. And we're down to the last screw. Hey, or we just lost power of the light. All right, folks, so after loosening all four of the bolts, um, which, uh, you know, three three of the four, the uh, the number two worked good. The fourth one, I couldn't get out of there without using a, uh, a number one. So now that they're loose, let's go ahead and pop pull this up. And it looks like we need to disconnect. Hopefully you can see this. The... Uh, CPU fan um, right here and this is really these things are really tight to work on so we got out of there and there is our uh, CPU so let me uh, all right so I got another uh, fill light this is uh, the first one was the com light which I've been using the crap out of and this is uh, Momon, which is uh, quite a bit brighter, but it costs a lot more. So, to get this out, um, we are going to pop this off and pull that back. And then we're going to be super gentle pulling it out of here. We don't want to bust off the uh, transistors. So, there you go. There's our i5 e 400. I'm going to clean this up and put it in a different computer. Next video, stay tuned. I will put in a uh, Intel uh, Pentium G5500 or Pentium Gold G5500. And um, 
you know, basically take that as if a uh, different processor you could put in this, the i3-8100, you could probably put an i5-8500, i5 an i5-8600, and most likely an i7-8700. All right, folks, so in this video, we're going to go ahead and install a new CPU into our Del Vostro 3670. Um, in case you haven't checked out my other videos, if you want to have dual hard drives, I've got a solution for that for you. If you wanted to try out a uh, more powerful power supply, I have a video on how to do that. Uh, if you want to upgrade um, this computer and put a video card in it, I've got uh, two videos on that. One is uh, basically just upgrading with a, a more basic graphics card, one that just draws power from its PCI slot. Then the other video is uh, using a um, new power supply that you put in that has um, PCI 6 and 8 pin power. Alright, so a few of the things we've done, plus uh, adding RAM. So, let's get to it. Um, this computer came with an i5-8400, and I have decided that I'm going to take that CPU and put it in a different computer of mine, one of my custom ones, um, because of... Uh, the upgradability of that computer versus this one. And, um, you know, maybe this will end up with an i5 in it again in the future, but uh, this is also demonstrating how you might switch out your uh, CPU if you want to either upgrade or, uh, for whatever reason, downgrade like I'm doing. Now, uh, most likely, the CPUs that will work with this are um, Celerons, HN Celeron, HN Pentium. In this case, we're going to put a G Pentium Gold G5500 in it, the i3-8100, the i3-8300, and most likely not only i5-8400, but the 8500 and 8600, and the i7-8700. Now, I didn't note any of the ones that end with a K on it. The reason for that is um, they... Uh, or 95 watts TDP versus 65, so they're drawing a little more power. And I really couldn't tell you um, if this this power supply will support uh, the video card I put in on top of a, a processor um, that is uh, drawing more power. On top of that, there's a good chance you also would need a uh, better CPU cooler uh, you have a lot more heat to dissipate. So that is uh, one of the reasons why I'm not putting a K uh, processor in there. I do have a i3-8350K that we could have tried. And maybe one day I will try it um, just to see how it handles. Um, because we like to do experimental stuff here. So, All right, so we've already removed the CPU. Now we've got our um, G5500. And you'll notice as you're looking at this, there's a couple of different uh, things around the perimeter the, uh, on the board portion there. And you want to take this, uh, basically this arrow, and line it up with that arrow down there on the motherboard. So we we're going to rotate it around. And then you want to make sure that you do this super gently. Now if you're really smart, you will have the tools necessary um, to make sure that you are static free. All right, so that's in there. Um, they will wiggle around a little. You don't want to uh, mess with it too much. If you start breaking off the transistors, that could be bad news. So then with this guy, this is an important step because you can ruin your um, CPU if this does not plant correctly. So we're going to go ahead and basically wrap that around there. So she's in there nice and tight. Now, um, so what I had done with the 8400, I, of course, cleaned this off. Um, different ways to clean it. And uh, I'll let you look that part up. All right, so we've got our uh, existing CPU fan, this big hunker. 
Um, it would be nice actually to put a different CPU cooler in here, but uh, since we're downgrading, hey, I probably, this computer will get limited use here in the future, I'm sure. All right, so what we have is this, uh, this came off the slow boat from China, some seat, heat sink compound, um, big old honker uh, tube. Uh, if you wait a while, you can get quite a bit. So this is going to last me quite a few builds probably. And if you watch this channel, and this was made in China, um, you'll know that I've, I've done a lot of different computers, plus on my other channels. So, um, you know, it's a good idea to uh, experiment with this to make sure that you put the, uh, the right amount on there. And uh, definitely want to make sure that you know, put this on there because otherwise your CPU will um, increase in temperature quite rapidly. You will hear your CPU fan screaming to try and keep that cool. And uh, it's not a good thing, all right? So we've done that as an experiment. Um, didn't make a video out of it. Maybe one of these days I will. Maybe one of these days actually I'll <laughs> burn up this Pentium chip or the uh, 7 Gen. All right, so... Depending on the documentation, you'll see they uh, recommend pretty much a little blob here. And that is about it right there. So um, you don't put a whole lot on there. Now put the cap back on the CPU cooler. Hopefully the shit won't dry out. All right, so now we've got to put our CPU fan back on. And uh, hopefully we won't screw this up. You want to make sure, because this cable is so short, that you rotate it so that it is placed to uh, line up with the CPU fan. Um, this could go in, looks like it could go in this way. Um, I'd have to actually watch the video to see how, uh, how it was lined up, but I'm pretty sure it was this way. Always a good idea, folks, to take pictures of uh, your setup um, before you start taking it apart. And all right, so I'm going to go and basically screw these four things, these four screws in, and uh, then we will uh, turn it on. Um, but uh, rest assured that it's going to work. So. Um, there's really no troubleshooting to do after that. Uh, the motherboard. As long as you got the right CPU in there, don't try and put a 7th gen in there or a 9th gen. Um, otherwise, it's not going to recognize it. So, But that is all we have um, for this video. Please like, please subscribe. Thank you. All right, so we are, uh, we're still working on it. I hate to uh, just cut it out like I did um, cause it actually, <laughs> it takes a little while. It takes a little while to screw all these in. Plus I didn't actually connect the CPU fan, um, before I stopped recording. So I'll go back hopefully and edit that. But if you're watching this, realize that I didn't, didn't finish that portion for you. Now one thing, you know, I, there's things I like about these kind of computers, these Dells. Um, this, this one's a really good, good machine. I've been happy with it, but it's, uh, you know, harder to upgrade and, um, working on it, you know, in such a tight space. Um, personally, I think every computer should be a full size tower. When you have the full size tower, you, uh, just don't have any problems, folks, with pretty much with getting in there. So this is going to be tough. Um, we've got cables, and this is where you probably could use a pair of those, uh, somewhat like a needle nose plier to reach in there, but, um, needless to say, I'll get that in there. I don't want to waste a lot of camera time here, uh, film time, but, uh, eventually we'll get that in there, so, even if I have to take the, uh, CD-ROM out. All right, so we got it in there. 
it just takes a little fin dangling, uh, which is, you know, a pain. Um, not so sure that I got this tightened down good enough, so I'm going to keep, keep working on it. And, uh, yeah, so I think we're good to go, folks. If there were any issues, I will, um, there'll be a little more footage after this, but otherwise... Uh, please like, please subscribe. Thanks for checking out the video. And um, hopefully you'll check out more of the videos if there's stuff you want to do with your Del Vostro computer. And this, uh, I said Del Vostro, this is the Inspiron, but Del Vostro is built very similar to this one. The 3670 model. Alright, so we're good. Thank you. Um, loaded up. There she is. The Dell Vostro, and just so you can see that we were successful. Um, let me type my password in here. Look at the flag for a second, folks. All right, so we're in here, and the easiest way to see what this is is open up File Explorer, go to this PC, and Properties. And there you go. There's your Intel Pentium Gold G5500 running at 3.8 gigahertz. Now, let's go ahead and do the CPU user benchmark on it. Why not, right? we got nothing else to do. Let's we'll just keep making videos. And this will be the part three. Oh, I forgot to plug in the internet. Hang on a second. All right, so um, even though this computer does have Wi-Fi, I have it set up for Ethernet. So we're going to let the benchmark run, and then uh, towards the end, I will pick it up again so you can see the scores. All right, so there's the scores. Um, gaming, 29%, which is um, not pathetic, but definitely for what we do here, not very good. Of course, this has the... Um, RX 560 Bravo in it. Um, desktop score, 62%. That's not bad. Workstation score, 32%. And not too excellent. And um, let's see, 2% background CPU. So uh, it's pretty good. We've got 12 gigs of RAM in it. And running, this is on a 4K monitor. Um, our processor is running way below expectations, but it uh, does have decent single core scores. So in case you don't know that um, gold G5500, 5600, very similar to the i3-7100 uh, for performance. This isn't too great for quad core, multi core. Luckily most games are, uh, you know, not to worry about that. The single core is more important. Now graphics card, it's also not doing so hot in here. Um, and I do have SSD SATA in it and also a hard drive, but, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's quite a bit of a downgrade. Uh, I wish I had the, the last benchmark that I did for this with the 8400 in here so you could see, uh, how it compared.